Burr, it's freezing. It's like zero degrees up here in Maine. It's not really good for riding, or is it? Stick around. So, you know, one of the things about riding motorcycles in areas that it gets cold is your riding season. And if you're like me, you want to extend it as much as you possibly can. Now, up here in Maine, we get uh, probably around March, uh, April, depending on the year. Usually in, in April sometime, you can crack the bikes out. And you can ride right up until you get snow, which could be November or December. This year, it's been a little bit funky. It's actually January and we just got our first major snowstorm. If you're like me, you always try to squeak out as very much as possible, especially on the tail end of riding and at the very beginning, because you want to get out there and ride and you want to ride as much as you can. So today, what I figured I'd do is give you a few pointers on cold weather riding. And most of this is going to center around the gear. Full disclosure before we get going, Riding in temperatures below freezing is dangerous. That's why I'm a big advocate for uh, bikes that have temperature displays on them. Most modern bikes have this. Even when it gets cold, they'll change to blue or maybe a snowflake will appear to remind you that you're getting into a uh, time where that you could encounter some ice on the roads. And remember, if you're, if you're in a curve and you're leaning in and you hit a patch of ice, it's lights out in San Francisco. That being said, we really do have to pay attention to the weather reports. So I think that's our, my tip number one, pay attention to the weather reports. If there's a chance that it could drizzle and it's cold, obviously that's gonna negate riding because you're gonna have ice on the roads, which is a no-go situation. Uh, and in the time periods in which you're trying to decide whether or not it's cold or hot, we have to think about Will there be snow on the roads or slush? Some people are out there when there's snow on the roads and um, yeah, I wanna say my hat's off to you, but you're kind of kind of dumb for trying to ride like that because it's, you're just asking for a crash. Check this out, we're in Scarborough. That is a motorcycle. <laughs> as far as squeaking out on the beginning and the end of season, how can you get a little bit more enjoyment out of riding? My typical gauge is uh, 30 degrees. If, if I'm going to ride and it's 30 degrees or colder, uh, it's not going to be enjoyable. Really, 40 degrees Fahrenheit is kind of the cutoff for comfortableness and really... Uh, less chance of hitting an ice patch. But if you hit 30 degrees Fahrenheit uh, or lower, roughly zero degrees Celsius, it's not gonna be a pretty situation and you're running a risk into to hitting uh, ice and, and bad weather conditions. But if you're riding and it's in that those colder temperatures, the biggest thing that you're gonna have to deal with is being cold. Zoom in on you, eh? zoom in on me, eh? Take off, see you guys later, zoom in on me. So I've got a bunch of gear behind me and we're gonna go through a few things and some tips on cold weather gear that can really help you out and some tricks that I found. Before I even get going though, I do wanna mention, mention my friends at Into the AM. They provided me with some really cool t-shirts. I'll put the link down in the description. Check them out if you get a chance. They're good guys, small business, trying to make a, a go at it and I'm not getting paid to, to mention them. We're gonna start at the top and we're gonna work our way down. The first thing that we're gonna look at is our helmets. So I really enjoy the Klein Trios Pro 2 helmet. I've been a big fan of this helmet. Uh, this is actually my second one, and I like them because not only are they lightweight, but they have the adventure style bike. They've got a visor, so when you're riding and it's sunny, uh, tipping your head down just a little bit filters the sun perfectly. But there are a few cautions when using a helmet like this in cold weather. First off, these have a transition visor on them. The transition visor is fantastic. It's just like auto dimming glasses. When you're out and you're riding, uh, I don't even wear sunglasses anymore because this shield will automatically dim according to the light conditions. But the caution with that is when it gets cold, it takes a really long time for this to be effective, uh, especially when you're in the dawn or dusk area and you need the, the shade to lighten up, oftentimes, it's still struggling to uh, clear itself because it's so cold. So that's one thing. Next thing I would just mention on these fancier helmets, you'll see these little dots. 
don't know if you can see that or not, but these little dots are for a pin lock visor system. Now pin lock is a pretty cool setup. Basically what it does is it, you put a secondary shield typically on the inside of the helmet and that secondary shield actually stays defrosted and defogged pretty well. Those are specifically designed for cold weather riding. That's, that's what they, they do. They're, they're designed to keep you free from fog. This type of helmet though does also lend a little bit of a disadvantage to cold riding because there is so much airflow. These vents, they don't hold your, your head, your heat in very well and you lose a lot of heat through the top of your head. So the better ventilated the helmet is, oftentimes the better suited it is for hot weather riding versus cold weather riding. So let me show you another helmet. This is one of my old production helmets. This is an HJC. This is a really nice helmet as well. I uh, ran these for a long time. This is a CL17. So this is one of their topper upper end helmets. A lot less ventilation. Obviously on the chin there isn't that big intake and all the ventilation that you do have, you can close up. So that lends itself to being a lot better for insulation. However, there is a fine line between closing everything up all the way and not closing it up enough because the more vents you close, the faster that this windscreen shield is going to fog up on you because you're keeping moisture inside your helmet. A lot of these helmets, including this one, will have an area in which you can put a chin curtain in. And uh, it's literally some Velcro strips and there's a piece that fits over. What this does is it keeps your breath from getting in contact with the screen. And this is a, a trick that they've borrowed from snowmobile helmets. Works really good. Think about getting a helmet that has the ability to put on that breath shield or chin skirt uh, to keep your moisture away from your visor. What you're also gonna end up noticing is when you're riding, you're usually gonna have to have this cracked if you have the ventilation shut down a lot because you're gonna need airflow or you'll be fogged up and iced up almost immediately. So we've covered our helmet. Let's get on to our jacket. Now this area of your body is your core. Your core is essentially where all your heat resides because it's protecting your organs. If you can keep your core warm, oftentimes your extremities, like your fingers and your feet, will feel fine because your blood is warm and it's circulating. So it makes sense to want to try to warm your core. I'm going to start out with a really neat jacket that another friend of mine sent me from iHood. Now iHood makes jackets uh, of the heated variety. They have a lot of different uh, options on Amazon. I'll throw a link down in the description. But I particularly like this jacket a lot because of the fact that it is very flexible and lightweight, which is something you want when you're riding your motorcycle. Uh, this jacket also has its own power source. So a battery fits into it and it will it will give you a readout on how much time is left. So we're at 50% and bonus track, you can even plug in your cell phone to charge uh, while this is in and it zips into a little pocket. I can imagine this would be a lot of fun for skiing or really even working outside, going to a campfire. Uh, this is a weatherproof jacket too with uh, fully waterproof seams. And of course the uh, buttons up here activate the different heating zones, which is kind of neat that you can have uh, different uh, heating zones set up for your neck, your arms, and your torso. Uh, this jacket works really well. This is the second one that I've had from them. They're reasonably priced and they're completely independent because they have their own power source. Give iHood a look on Amazon and check out their products. You'll be pleasantly surprised at the price, but also the quality. The build is really nice. Let's move on to another form of insulation. I like the heated jacket that I was just wearing that Junior's now wearing. Right, Junior? Oh, yeah. Nice and toasty. There is a limitation to that when you're on your motorcycle. Because if you're like me, you're going to go on a long trip. Uh, the battery pack that goes in this, you're going to need to exchange it a few times over because it's going to just run out of juice. So what I like to do is I like to wear heated gear on my motorcycle that actually plugs in. And I'm going to show you the first bit of this. I have been a fan of Venture Heat for quite some time. And I've owned quite a few different sets from them. These jackets, they're really... There's really nothing to them. It's a liner that's going to plug into your motorcycle. So you're not gonna have a battery supply that's portable and you're literally going to be tethered to your motorcycle. 
based on one of these little plugs. And the, ways that, the way that I've set these up is I have a little jumper cable. So this DIN connector is what you want because if you crash, you want it to be able to just pull apart. But this is the DIN connector that will plug into my bike. And then I actually use, I think this is an SAE connector, which my battery tender runs on. So that plugs in to my bike. So this is, this is how I run my setup on this. Now these liners are very, very lightweight. There's really nothing to them, but on high, these things will cook you out. The reason why I like Venture is because they have a built-in controller into the jacket, whereas some of the Gerbings and the other uh, gears, you have to actually have like a troller, like a little controller thing on the, on the handlebars, and I just, I don't need that. This is very handy. Once this is on, uh, you can just click it and, it and it does three levels. The other thing I like about the Venture Heat Jackets, and again, this is none of these are paid uh, product reviews here, so I want you to be aware of this, uh, is that they also have plugs for gloves built into the jacket. So these plugs are really nice if you're gonna wear heated gloves. I'm gonna show you a pair of these heated gloves, Venture Plus. And these use the same technology as the jacket. They have built-in heat controllers for each glove independently. And they're really, really nice gloves to wear. You can see they have the SAE connect, uh, the, excuse me, the DIN connector, which plugs into the jacket. And these themselves are waterproof as well. My hands always seem to be the coldest item on my body when I'm riding a motorcycle, just because you're out there. And if you get any wetness associated with that, it obviously just saps the heat right from your hands. And if your hands are numb and you can't feel them, it's pretty unsafe to be on a motorcycle. Now my BMW GS has superior hand grips on it that are heated, uh, that I actually have not really had to wear these gloves too much, but I do pack them when I'm in cold weather just in case I get stuck in the rain. And I really, really like these gloves. Downside to these gloves though, which they are designed for motorcycles, you've got uh, leather palms and vibration skid plates, is that they're bulky. So on a motorcycle, sometimes a little bit more tactical feel is what you want. Um, and these are quite bulky. Again, a, a great addition if you're uh, riding and it's cold out and you need a little something extra for your hands. But if you have robust grips that are heated, like BMWs from the factory, chances are you may not really need heated gloves. Stick with a heated liner, crank up your core temperature, keep your blood temperature high, and those heated gloves will do quite a bit. I wanna also show you one other thing about jackets. Most modern jackets, and if you've seen my videos, you know I really like the Revit line of jackets. I just think they're well made. Most of them will have a liner that you can put in for cold weather riding. I use the Sand 4 H2O series from Revit. I really like it. It's been my favorite jacket I've ever, I've ever run. And I like about it because it has multiple layers. So it has a waterproof layer, it has an insulation layer, and then it obviously has the outer layer. Those layers improve the ability for you to stay warm because you're trapping air in between them. If you pair this liner up with that heated jacket, and I put the heated jacket closest to my skin, you will be sweating even in zero degrees uh, riding. You, 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 you will be amazed at how warm your core will be. It's your digits that get cold. Uh, when you're really, really riding below uh, freezing. Here's another option for you if you're, uh, we're working our way down, we're now at the Botaco area of our body, heated seat. Uh, I think some people kind of sally out on this and they say, oh, you don't need a heated seat, you're on a motorcycle, whatever. But let me tell you, if you have a cold butt, <laughs> your bot, you will feel it in your spine. You will feel it in your body. When we're out hunting in the woods, one of the things they always tell you is don't sit on the ground because your heat's gonna go right out. And boy, on a motorcycle, it makes a huge difference. So this is a Corbin seat. This is a heated Corbin seat. This is made for BMW. I love the fact that they put warning signs on it basically saying, be careful, you're gonna burn yourself. <laughs> but this is a huge upgrade. If you can put out the coin for a heated seat, you'll really feel a difference. Uh, again, very, very good option to have on a motorcycle. Obviously there's heated gear for your pants. They have pants liners. Uh, I've never had the need to get those even riding in really cold temperatures. The heated seat and keeping my core warm has been more than sufficient for me. Uh, and of course your feet get cold as well and they have heated insoles 
Again, I've never had to do those. I wear a nice thick pair of wool socks uh, if I know I'm gonna be out there. And don't underestimate the chemical uh, pads that you can buy, the, the hot hands. Those heating packs work really well. If you just throw one in the, your boot, in the tip of your boot, you'll, you'll feel a big difference as well. But again, keeping your core warm is gonna help keep your extremities warm as well. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about is your bike itself. And it's the last thing that comes in contact between your bike and the road. And that's your tires. So I don't have a motorcycle tire here with me, um, but I do have a small uh, garden tractor tire here just to kind of explain the principle. When your bike is on the ground, the only thing that's going to be touching the ground is a very small portion of the wheel. So uh, on my GS, that is the size of the amount of rubber that is touching the road. That's your front tire and this is your back tire. It's not a lot. Uh, if you think about the surface contact area between these two and you get into slush or even wet pavement, that is not a lot uh, between you and the road, right? And obviously we know if we lose traction, we crash. So not a good situation. If you're gonna ride and there's a chance that you're gonna be in some nasty weather, perhaps even hitting a little bit of slush here and there, you've got to have good tires. If your tires are really good on the track or you know they're more of the aggressive on-road tires with very little off-road ability they're just not going to work well when you get into anything with snow or even uh, slush if you have tires with poor tread depth which means they're on the outside of their their lifespan remember the only thing separating you from crashing is very very little amounts of rubber so you need to have good tires on it Right now on my GS, I have 10,000 miles on the factory Dunlop and the rear tire is smoked. Like it's right down almost flat. I could have squeaked out a few rides, but I didn't dare because without putting a new tire on the back, I'm just rolling the dice if I hit something. And to me, that's just not worth it. So your tires, very important piece of equipment. I know we've talked a lot about gear and jackets and heated things, but don't forget your bike. Don't forget the actual tires themselves. Well, I hope that this video may have helped you. I enjoyed showing you some gear. I thank you to the folks that sent me some things to talk about, iHood and Into the AM. We love you guys. If you have any comments down below on your winter riding tips, please let me know. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, stay warm and ride safe. <laughs>